This is breaking news. Happening right now, Governor Hochul is delivering remarks at the Stonewall National Monument Visitor Center groundbreaking. Let's go to it now. In fact, 53 years in coming that there finally is the appropriate recognition for what went on here many, many, many decades ago. And to the early pioneers who stood up against the tides of their time, exuding such courage to say, I'm a human being and I have a right to go where I want. I can go socialize, I can dance, I can hang out, and you can't stop me. That's what the message of Stonewall was all across this nation, and it started right here. It started right here, and we're so proud of that history, and we cherish that history, and we honor that history, and today we begin the groundbreaking for something that's going to be there for generations to come, because long after we're gone, we want this story to be told, this story to be an inspiration, especially to the struggling young people to know that, no, you're part of a beautiful family. And it all started here in New York. I want to thank some incredible leaders whose inspiration brought us to this day. Diana Rodriguez, the founder and president of Pride Live, has joined us here. What a great day, Diana, extraordinary leader. Anne-Marie Goddard, the president of Pride Live Board of Directors. Anne-Marie. Ruth Porat, the senior vice president of Google and Alphabet. What a great corporate partner as well. I believe our, our majority leader, the majority leader of the entire United States Senate, Chuck Schumer, is also here today. Thank him for his incredible leadership. Council member Eric Boucher is here. Eric, where are you? Let's give a round of applause to our council member and everyone who worked so hard to make this a reality. But I have to also say, I said this is a great day of celebration, but there's also some very difficult news that just came down in the last hour. Yeah, you can boo. I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And no, I'm not talking about the Supreme Court's gun case, because that was yesterday when they said that a governor, like the governor of New York, does not have the right to keep laws in place intended to protect our citizens in places like this. And I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the fact that they just said an hour ago that there is no constitutional right to have an abortion in America. They just sent women back in this country back to the dark ages. And with my friends, you don't need to worry about New York because everything that's good happens in New York. We're fighting back. We're protecting our providers. We're making sure insurance companies are covering abortion services. We're giving money to support our providers because we know that with the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty is in our harbor, and she'll always be there with that torch to say, when your rights are oppressed, you know where to come. You come to New York. So our providers will take care of you and treat you with the rights that we believe you have here in the state of New York. So we go forth, discouraged by the Supreme Court, anxious about what they may do to other rights that we hold dear, such as marriage equality. We'll continue to protect that right here in the state of New York. And remember Edie Windsor and others who stood up, who stood up for us. We'll always stand up. We don't just stand up, though, because this is New York. We stand up and we fight back, don't we? We stand up and we fight back. And we're going to continue to do that. So today, we honor the legacy of this place, the story, the resiliency, the tremendous pride associated with this movement and our gatherings here, but also know that as New Yorkers, we have a moral responsibility to take the torch that's been passed to us, whether it's protecting our rights for safety against gun violence, our rights to determine our own outcome and our, make our own decisions for women's bodies, and also the right to love and identify any way you damn well please, because this is New York. We will cherish your rights, we'll honor them, and we'll send a message to the rest of the nation. If your state does not respect you, does not treat you with the rights that we think you have here in New York, then what are you doing in those other states? Come to New York! This is our, thank you everybody. Great celebration and congratulations.
please welcome Senator Chuck Schumer. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. First, I want to comment on that horrible, horrible decision that came out an hour ago. Today is one of the darkest days our country has ever seen. Millions upon millions upon millions of American women are having their rights ripped away from them by five unelected justices on the extremist MAGA Supreme Court. These justices, these justices appointed by Republicans presiding without any accountability have stolen a fundamental right to have an abortion away from American women in this country. These justices were intentionally appointed by Republicans to overturn Roe v. Wade, and every Republican senator knew this would happen if they voted to confirm these radical justices. The MAGA Republicans are complicit in today's decision and its consequences for women and families in this country. Today's decision makes crystal clear the contrast as we approach the November elections. Elect more MAGA Republicans if you want a nationwide, if you want nationwide abortion bans, the jailing of women and doctors, no exemptions for rape or incest. Or elect, go to the polls, fight. Elect more pro-choice Democrats to save Roe and protect a woman's right to make decisions over their own bodies. Now, to the wonderful, the issue at hand today, and this great, great dedication. Now, first, I want to thank everybody who make, helped make this groundbreaking possible, starting with generations of activists, advocates, and agitators, dating all the way back to that fateful night in 1969, to those people who never back down. I want to thank Anne Marie Goddard and all of Pride Live for their work overseeing this project and making it a reality. And I want to recognize my colleagues in government who helped make it possible with their hard work and support. I introduced legislation years ago that is now law to make Stonewall National Monument a reality. I want to thank both Senator Gillibrand and Congressman Nadler for working with me on that legislation. As you all know, this is deeply personal to me. I am the proud father of a gay daughter, a few, and very proud of that. A few years ago, I walked my daughter down the aisle to marry her wife, and it was one of the happiest days of my life. The utter joy that I felt that day, that moment would not have occurred without the righteous and tireless work of the LGBTQ movement on whose shoulders we stand today. Think of how far we've come. Just seven years ago, marriage equality was not yet the law of the land. Just 11 years ago, LGBTQ members of our military could not serve their nation openly. And 22 years ago, I was the only and first politician senator to walk in the gay pride parade. And now it's the hottest party of the year. So this is a day to take stock of the amazing progress we've made as a nation. This is the day to make st take stock of the progress we've made in LGBTQ rights as a nation. But my friends, at the same time, we cannot ignore the storm clouds that are gathering on the horizon. We need the same activism that the early Stonewall pioneers exhibited to energize the movement to preserve hard-won rights that a MAGA Supreme Court 
may try to take away. Are you with me as we fight to make sure we keep our rights? Across the country, we are seeing so many politicians on the hard right from the MAGA Republicans unleash hateful and bigoted rhetoric against LGBTQ Americans as they attempt to roll back the great progress we have made. The transgender community is especially facing vicious abuse, ugly attacks that I had hoped we had long since retired to the dustbins of history. So let me say this in the strongest possible terms. I stand with the transgender community. I stand with the LGBTQ community. I stand with every kid who is afraid of their future. We stand with you. We are with you. And I will keep doing everything in my power as Senate Majority Leader to protect your rights, your equality, your dignity. Now, hopefully, hopefully, not long from now, we'll look back and think it was absurd and backward that the transgender community ever experienced such discrimination in our country. I hope that day will come. I pray that day will come. I believe that day will come, but it will not come on its own. It took millions and millions of Americans hundreds of years to build this awesome country of fair laws and opportunity. Americans who fought, protested, agitated, and inspired our country to move closer, closer to its highest ideals. From the abolitionists and conductors of the Underground Rail Railroad, to the women who gathered at Seneca Falls, to the organizers of the early labor movement, to the peaceful marchers who crossed the bridge in Selma, and to the brave gay and transgender New Yorkers who came together five decades ago at this place called Stonewall to teach our nation the power of resistance. At this moment of profound anxiety about the direction of our country, I want to remind everyone here of an unassailable truth. America does change for the better, but its capacity for change in speed, in scope, is up to us. So let's keep marching. Let's keep speaking out. Let's keep working towards our goal of a fairer and more equal America, and we will together achieve it. God bless those Stonewall pioneers. God bless you. We will win. We will win. Put your hands together for the president of the Pride Live Board of Directors, Anne Marie Gothard. Hello to every oops. Hello hello to everyone that's here with us this morning and those of you who are joining us on the live stream. On behalf of Pride Live, welcome to the groundbreaking ceremony for the Stonewall National Monument Visitor Center. We have a wonderful lineup of speakers representing the LGBTQ plus community and our allies, such as you just heard from Governor Hochul and Senator Schumer, who stand with us as we celebrate this historic occasion. This is the first LGBTQ plus visitor center in the U.S. National Park System. We also have some video messages from friends of Pride Live who want to be part of this very important day. But first, let's begin with some longtime supporters of Pride Live and the idols of the queer community. Here to sing the Star Spangled Banner are the legendary Allison Palmer, Elizabeth Ziff, and Amy Ziff, also known as Betty. Oh, we are very happy to be here to sing this traditional song of resistance and resilience. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars 
through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs burn